what is going on youtube and welcome back to the trader shop with me t hobbs for another edition of the top down analysis um been working on these uh this series of videos trying to make sure i put them out every single week on sunday i know it's a big football week so if you get an opportunity to watch this then you know hopefully it, it gives you a little insight on what i'm looking at how we're viewing the uh next week events uh in the shop so first and foremost, we'd like to start off by saying, please make sure you tip the barbers, aka hit the like and subscribe button, share this on the on Twitter, share it on social media. If it helped you out last week, hopefully it, hopefully it helps you out this week because I always rewatch the video before I make a new video. And watching the video last week, we absolutely killed the top down market analysis. So if you mark those levels last week on you know the monthly all the way down, we're gonna be updating those levels today based off the price session that we got last week. So without further ado, let's jump right into the earnings whisperer because I don't go through this every single week, I don't. There's only once every three months that I even pay attention to earnings. And the only reason why is because the tech, the tech earnings are some of the largest earnings that affect what I trade. And what I trade is the ETF of the NASDAQ and the ETF of uh, the S&P 500. So, if I'm going to be trading those, I want to make sure that what I'm trading, I'm paying attention to the earnings within it. Some of the larger stocks being on Monday, nothing crazy, nothing huge stands out besides like SoFi. That doesn't really move the market. But Tuesday is the market mover after the close. And then what I like to see on the what I see on these days most often is just like positioning. Right. You'll you'll notice that buyers and sellers are going to be making bets on these earnings reports. And that's what you call positioning. So after close it's the big dog so microsoft which has basically been at all-time high after all-time high every single day for the last two months it reports big after the close on um tuesday amd a chip maker uh kind of a sympathy play to nvidia that's going to be one to watch and then alphabet google one of the biggest stocks in the stock market is reporting after close i don't plan on trading any of these i'm just being aware of the volatility for the next week all right, as we go into Wednesday, again, a lot of real estate stuff, insurance stuff. Qualcomm is the biggest one that kind of stands out to me, but not looking to play these, just being aware of what where the market could be, you know, what volatility could be coming into the market. Then we look on to Thursday after close. And again, it's another big, big, big tech stock. The pretty much the biggest stock in the market, Apple. That's debatable between them and Microsoft right now, but Apple, Amazon and Meta. All of these are in what's called the Magnificent Seven. So you best believe that they're going to be causing some volatility in this market, either to the downside or the upside. Doesn't really matter to me which direction. All right. So let's just move on and talk about some news. So if we come over here to the news, you can see that on Monday, there isn't really much news as usual. There's not really move, uh, news to be aware of. Now, I don't trade news. I don't. However, I understand that in order for people to want to buy or sell, fundamentals is what start that process psychologically, right? Like you're going to want to buy around certain news catalysts or you're going to want to start positioning yourself expecting news catalysts to be a certain way. So I like to pay attention to the red folder, yellow folder, orange folder. It doesn't matter to me. Red folder being more, most important. All I know is that the market doesn't like uncertainty. And when the news is coming, the market usually stalls out for a little bit before that uncertainty comes. Ultimately, I play, I trade price action and rely on market structure, however. So on Tuesday, we have consumer confidence, which is a big one, but even much bigger than that is going to be the jokes report, right? Every time this jokes report comes in, it definitely moves the market. Now, if you're asking for my opinion on what the fundamentals should look like, bullish or bearish, here's what I would tell you. If the jobs go down, that's good for the markets. If the jobs go up, that's bad for the markets. It's that simple. And you can honestly start to see if you dig into the fundamentals a little bit, you'll start to see that a lot of the big names are laying people off, right? In big numbers, like big chunks, like 10, 20, 30%. That ultimately is going to bring that job opening down or that unemployment down, hopefully, unless they're they're get it, it could bring it down temporarily. But if they're getting another job right away, it's ultimately going to bring it right back up. So all right, so moving on into Wednesday, we got uh, employment cost index, Chicago PMI, crude oil. More importantly, what everybody's going to be waiting on, everybody's going to be waiting to trade, expecting some big moves out of this one. I'm expecting to see a lot of blown accounts, you know, <laughs> a lot of free resets being put out there. But uh, we got the federal funds rate. 
at 2 p.m. That day, we'll be streaming live pretty much all day, I'm sure of it. Um, and then FOMC statement, and then the press conference. This is when it gets really wild. 2.30 Eastern, Jerome Powell is going to speak. And I can tell you right now, the market, in my opinion, has priced in a rate cut in March. If he says anything relating to the fact that they won't cut rates in March, this market is going to fall. That's just the way I'm looking at it. I'm not looking to play that volatility. I'm more looking to just watch it. I don't really like to trade the news. It's not that I can't. I just don't like it, right? Like I'd just rather trade on regular days or get my trades in before the before the news starts. All right. So moving on to uh, February 1st. I think this is Thursday if I'm doing my math right. Um, challenge, challenger job cuts. I don't know what that is. So unemployment games is going to be the big one that day, right? You're going to be looking to see what the economy is doing. And based off what happens on FOMC day, it could affect unemployment claims the next day as well in regards to how we react to it. It could be bullish and then be even more bullish or it could be bearish for the FOMC statement and then be even more bearish for the unemployment claim. So we'll see how that how that kind of affects the markets. And then Friday we finish up. We have non farms on Friday. So it is a nonstop catalyst week. And I absolutely love these weeks because the volatility is high. You know, you can position yourself pretty well. You don't have to wait through a lot of consolidation. Um, so looking forward to playing the new playing the uh, the events this week or the volatility this week. So that being said, let's move right on into the NASDAQ. I like to start with the NASDAQ because everybody pretty much plays the NASDAQ. So you guys can be relatable to the NASDAQ. So these black lines that you see right here are the Fibonacci retracement based based off the one year time frame. I like to do a fib all the way down, you know, just basically kind of putting me to see where the 30 percent 50 percent ranges are so don't worry about those black lines but let's get right into the monthly top-down analysis uh for the nq so let me just open this up here Thank you, <clears throat> sorry my wife was bringing me some food <clears throat> so let me open this up and i've already kind of got it pre predetermined for you guys uh because i'm a i'm a book nerd when it comes to charts so i just constantly chart all the time anyway so the first thing I noticed is the monthly demand zone that we talked about in my last video, the video before that. It's going to stay here because it's a monthly demand zone and it takes a while to come back to a monthly demand zone. Anytime you're watching price on a monthly time frame, then you can expect it to take a long time to get to where you think it might go. The first thing that I noticed is last week we were I think we were in like 17,200 range and I talked about the monthly being extremely bullish. I talked about this retest of 16,343 or 342 being basically a bounce of the 30% or the 50% retracement on the FIB. We got that bounce and I called for us breaking all time highs um, with be adjacent on. Well, that's exactly what happened. We broke above 17,690 and then we ended up pushing up almost another 200 points into 17,796. Now, as you can see, again, on the monthly, we still look bullish, right? Like we're getting a little bit of, uh, a little bit of selling, but it's, it's not, you know, it's not anything to, to ride home about, especially from a monthly time frame, right? So as far as I'm concerned, if I was riding this swing on the monthly, maybe start, you know, getting out of my position a little bit. But for the most part, I'm still going to leave runners, right? That's how I would look at this. Uh, if we look at this a little further, we got a fair value gap, 15,684 through roughly about 15,093425. The monthly is just kind of where I get the sentiment from. Where What is the sentiment that I have right now? it's still bullish because we're breaking above highs, we're retesting highs, and we're continuing higher, right? Until something changes on a higher time frame from the monthly, I, I, there's no reason to be anything but bullish, right? We had this supply zone, we ate right through it, and we're not building new supply yet. Next week can change a lot of that. So I don't really have a bearish thesis. I only can go bullish. Therefore, I'm looking for retests of these uh, monthly highs, right? Which <laughs> basically we're already done. So where can we look to be bullish on the monthly i would have to go down to a little a little closer to price to kind of really give you my thesis and that's kind of what we're going to do next so let's go down to uh the weekly and then we'll take this monthly off here do, 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 and then we'll go to the weekly right here all right so now we can start to get a little bit better view of what's happening as we get closer to price right so on the weekly we have the weekly demand which pretty much lines up with the weekly or the monthly demand right is just a little bigger because you're closer to price we have all-time high at 17796 remember this is with b adjustment on so it's going to be different than what you see on the nasdaq the qqq or the the average person looking at the futures nasdaq 
you have to click this button down here and turn B adjustment on so you can actually see where price has been. It should be the same on everybody's chart now, now that we're above it, but just FYI. All right, so first thing I noticed is a very, very nice rejection on the weekly candle right here, right? And later you'll see as we go down into the daily and the four hour, you'll see that we actually created supply up through here, right? People call these hidden supply and demand zones. They are hidden supply and demand zones as long as it, I mean, but you can uncover them, right? You just have to go to a different time zone to uncover those demand zones, right? Or those supply zones. So on the weekly, we know we created supply in here, but again, cannot be bullish until we start to break structure, change character, those type of things. Four, 17, 4, 9, 50 is the first test that I think uh, buyers will have to defeat in order to continue to go up higher. And again, we'll start to see that on the daily time frame. So let's just jump down to the daily. That's pretty much it on the weekly. It's pretty uneventful when you look at it the weekly, right? Especially if we've been looking at this thing all week. All right, so let's take this off. We drop down to the daily time frame. And this is where things start to get a little bit more interesting, in my opinion, because we can start to see exactly what price is trying to do. All right. So bulls, if you're a bull, you want to see this daily change of care to hold at 17,409, right? You can see that we found buyers at 17,470 when we were tested this, this daily demand zone right here, right? If you're a bull, you want to see this area hold and you want to see price continue to trade back above the all time high right now, the daily on Thursday, January 25th. Well, I should take that back Wednesday, January 24th. We put in a high, right? The next day we failed to get back above that high. So theoretically, this is already potentially a change of character because we failed to, to put in a new high, right? We drank, we came down, came down, put in a lower high or higher low. A, high, a lower high so now this should have been another higher high but it wasn't so therefore on the daily we've already started a semi downtrend right downtrend doesn't indicate a change of character per se it does for me because the way i look at change of character is as soon as we stop making higher highs and higher lows and we put in a lower high and a high and a lower low that's a change of character for me but technically you don't change character until you break through the first significant area of structure and that's why this change of character for me is 17,409.50. if you're a bull you're looking for buyers to defend this area to potentially go back up pretty much push through back above all-time highs at some point we need to start trading back above all-time highs if you're a bull i'm more inclined to be bearish with my thesis this week it doesn't mean that i'm eliminating the bullish case it's just more so what i'm looking for based off some other technicals that we'll go through as well so to the bearish case i'm looking for a break below 17,409. once we get below 409 and you'll see as we go down further it's pretty much i would i'm not going to say a straight drop because people get that confused but it, there is a lot there is not a lot of structure to catch us below 409 and we can start trading right down to 17,000. This is in Q, a $400 400 point drop between tonight when the market's open at 5 p.m. Central and tomorrow morning and by the end of the week is not something that can't be done, right? Like NQ can flush in seconds, right? It doesn't take it long. So I'll be looking for if we break below 40950, then I'll be looking to be more bearish right and start looking for retest of this area and then start trading into the daily high retest right closing this gap and then looking to get into the 16,978 range right from 16,978 I expect a bounce in this area right I expect price to start trading down in this area right we come down here we may bounce back up but then not make it all the way back up here right maybe come back up here and then start trading lower right and then the next change of character would be down here or break of structure would be 16,657. But just for this week, because I, I mean, if we get all the way down here by the end of the week, that's going to be one heck of a weekly candle. But it's possible. Not saying it's not possible. But for this week, for the bearish case, anything below 17,409.50 is going to kind of be my signal to say, OK, I've already been taking shorts and longs. Right. But that's going to be my signal to say, OK shorts are probably the move all the way into the next demand zone so uh maybe write that level down or don't you know just here to help all right so let's move on down to the four hour um top down analysis and we'll start to see some of that supply that i was discussing from earlier all right so we get down here to the four hour supply zone again we created this supply right 
because of this candle right if you oh sorry let me go down to the four hour here we go <clears throat> because of this um this swing high right here right let me get my little ink here so this swing high was created right turn this magnet off all right so this swing high was created here right at the all-time high we sold off and if we were to continue bullish, we needed to start trading back above this all-time high, right? Once we put in this swing high and this swing high, right? This one before that one. But once we put in those, uh, I should say, lower highs, that was an indication that price wanted to start trading lower. We tried to sweep the high, right? And failed again, right? Therefore, you can already see the decline from the interest in bulls, right? At these higher prices. They're coming back down and they need to see if they can pick up more bulls in this area here or we're going to start trading lower and again we got that four hour change of character here right we got a fair value gap here that we can start trading into there's so many reasons and this is what i was saying over here look at how much lack of support there is from here all the way through here there's not a lot of area for price to bounce off of that's why i say if we get through which on the four hour we're already changing characters right you can see on the four hour we've already changed character which means we could remain bearish on the way down and if that's the case i'm going to be looking again to start shorting the market but also playing longs off a lot of these demand zones that we have built uh at the lower stages of price all right so that's pretty much my plan as far as the supply area the bearish plan is any retest in this area as long as we stay below the all-time high any retest of 17,617 through roughly about 17,751 I'm bearish right we caught a nice move in the shop on um on Friday uh Justin was tr still, still trading I was trading but I was trading off the stream but he was in uh ES short basically the same area he took the market short straight down and and we nailed the targets here if you go back and watch the live stream or just follow me on Twitter I usually post shorts about the live stream we talk about the pre-market plans and the levels work it's not that they work because it's not a secret sauce all i'm doing in regard all supply and demand is if you trade ict all supply and demand is is just premium arrays right and discount arrays this area is at a premium right shoppers don't want to buy at this level because it's at a premium price this has been defined because when we came up here before sellers sold the market therefore they want to sell back down to the premium I mean to the discount and then this is where they want to be buyers tomato tomato right like it doesn't matter all that matters is that you understand price action you can call it whatever you want it doesn't matter just understand how market structure works and you will do much better in your trading all right that being said let's move back over to es and we'll go over the es plan really quickly and um how am i on time okay great i'm at 18 minutes i try to keep these about 30 minutes in time so I don't keep you guys too long all right so all-time highs this is the big <laughs> the big conversation that we had all week uh Justin and I just discussing the difference between all-time highs would be adjustment on be adjustment off and in my opinion whatever you believe it doesn't really matter you should just understand that there's levels here that you should probably pay attention to because they work right therefore let's drop right down into the monthly supply zone or the monthly uh zones that i have and we'll start discussing the es all right so es last week we talked about the same thing right last week we were down i believe we were down at like 40 47 72 somewhere around there right and we talked about i said does it look like price is bearish no it looked like we're gonna continue to go higher and that's exactly what we did i even told you exactly where i thought price would trade into and it was 49.34 and as we come down to the weekly daily four hour i'll show you exactly what price did when it came up to that level which tells me these b adjustment levels will continue to hold because it's just an average of the contracts that have been averaged into it when the contracts rolled over all right i digress monthly demand zone at 4400 we've talked about this on every single video it's going to remain there until we retest it. it may take a long time though monthly fair value gap again talked about this uh on a previous video at 448150 through about 4600 we'll call it 4600 because i hate saying all those other numbers that being said i don't expect these levels to be tested too soon unless everything that we talked about in the beginning as far as the news catalyst right if it's bearish 
you 1000% start to see some of these levels retested because all of this buying is pricing in a lot of things, right? There's a lot of things that happen in this fundamentally that's been baked into the price. If those things start to change, um, I will refer you to Tesla stock. Just go look at Tesla. It's one of the magnificent sevens. When the fundamentals change, the fundamentals didn't change, but their outlook changed. Tesla's been selling off for an entire week, right? They went from 300 a share earlier in the year down to 185, somewhere around there. And it happened in a week. Fear spreads much faster than greed, right? People will get out of their sell side positions or their buy positions much faster then they'll start buying the market. The greed obviously can grow, but the fear spreads much faster. So just keep that in mind. All right. All right. So we got monthly supply from 4,800 all the way up to 5,028.25. To me, that's where the all-time high is in regards to futures with B adjustment on. So that's my all-time high. To me, ES has not yet reached all-time highs, which is another reason why I'm more bullish that I'm more bullish on ES's ES where it is because if ES can continue to at least break all-time highs, then it's going to continue to push NQ up. I know they're similar instruments, but the way where they are in market structure is completely different. And that's why sometimes you can trade one in one direction and the other in the other direction before they both go in the same direction. So, all right. So we're going to move down, drop down to the weekly time frame. Let me just get rid of this monthly. And then we'll go over here to the weekly time frame and we'll go over our levels over here. All right. So the weekly again, we'll start with the bearish scenario, right? So bearish, we talked about this weekly supply zone. Um, oh, sorry. I turned on weekly, but I didn't change the time frame. All right. So we talked about this weekly supply zone last week in the video. You can go back and check it. Check my math. I think it was forty nine, three, four, two, five. If you look at the high point, I mean, this doesn't happen all the time. Right. But it's something that you can hold your hat on with your analysis. Like this is why I do it, because I want to go back and see how I did. I said that if we start to get bullish, I expect us to, to meet resistance at 49.34 on the weekly, 49.3425. And I'll be darned if the high point of this candle is not exactly there at 49.3425. Look in the top left, you can see the purple, look at the H and you'll see 49.3425. And as I go down in the analysis, you'll see exactly what happened at those levels multiple times, all right? So definitely do your top-down analysis. All right, so weekly high retest, 48.41.50, something that I'm marking on my chart because once price breaks above a high, I expect it to come back down and retest that high and or that low. I did not mark this entire demand zone here because you're gonna see as we come down, my levels on the daily and the four hour pretty much cover this area, all right? So weekly high retest, if we're, if we're gonna remain bullish, we need to retest here and then continue bouncing and going a little bit higher. I don't know what price is going to do because there's too many catalysts, but I can tell you where the levels are that price should react. That's what I'm here for. All right. We have a weekly fair value gap here at 4702 through about 4666 and a weekly demand zone, demand zone that has been untapped. So even if even if uh, ES decides to change character here, right, then remember, ES built much better structure, in my opinion, on the way up. Therefore, ES could potentially potentially hold these levels while NQ continues to fall. Right. And that's why I'm going to be much more interested in playing NQ for the foreseeable future, especially if we get bearish, because I just feel like NQ has a lot more ways to go down because it's so overvalued because of the tech sector. I should say pumped up more because of the tech sector. Right. Looking further down into the future, again, these are weekly levels at 4405, uh, weekly weekly fair value gap between 4405 and 434150, and then weekly demand at 430725. These are areas where price could react and look to bounce. Not looking for these things to happen during the week, but again, anything can happen because the volatility is going to be crazy. So I just make sure I have those levels and I'm watching those levels. So I hope that helps you. Let's move on to the daily time frame. All right, so let me take this off here. All right, turn it on the daily. All right, so if we look at the daily, um, hold on, let me go and change this to the daily. There we go. All right, so now that supply zone starts to show itself even more, right? So on the daily supply, right, we have 49.16, right? 49.16 through roughly about 49.57, right? A lot of times, if you if you traded the market long enough, you'll understand that price likes to go right in the center of these ranges and then find 
that this is too too much of a premium you can see right at 4934 not once but twice we came to the middle of this rectangle i talked about it in my last video if you draw these rectangles and you turn on the rectangle the the middle line setting it's a godsend it all like price price reacts to the middle a lot more often than you would think so if you're drawing the zones correctly so um we got that rejection and then we're printing if you're if you're a candlestick watcher right you'll understand what this doji print sometimes can identify or signify on at the top of an uptrend right here's a doji candle right here at the top of an uptrend to illustrate exactly what i'm discussing this is called an evening star potentially evening star print at the top of an aggressive uptrend when we print these doji candles usually what it means is buyers and sellers basically have agreed that you know what we're not going higher and we potentially can go lower therefore you'll get this print here we'll come back up put one more retest in and then we start trading down just like we did right here right just like we did right here right so is that is that definitive no but it's something that you could pay paying attention to that gives you more these it gives you more credibility to your thesis of the market potentially being bearish next week right i'm more bullish on es than i am on nq but i do understand the bears i'm leaning more toward the bearish case right but i'm gonna play it either way it doesn't matter to me all right so daily change of character you should pay attention to 4889 a break below 4889 4990 level is going to signify that the character has changed on the current uptrend it doesn't mean the uptrend is over it just means that intermediately on the daily time frame we've started a downtrend that's all it means right beneath that again because es has built more structure daily break of structure is right beneath that so we could bounce here or we could break this if we break 4873 4874 i remember these levels like they were yesterday if we break beneath here that's when es also starts to push down fast we're looking at 4837 4838 for the daily high retest sitting right over here right before if we break this then we're coming all the way back down to 4800 okay basically closing all of these gaps that were created if you trade ict doesn't matter i don't care all you need to know is there's gaps in price and the market doesn't like gaps the market likes to fill these gaps and when price doesn't doesn't provide much uh structure those are gaps that's all it means all right so let's move down to the four hour and we got about three minutes so i might run a little over today just because um, I definitely want to go over the VIX, but the VIX usually takes, you know, it's really quick. So, all right. So let's jump into the four hour time frame here. There we go. And let's turn off the daily do, 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 right there. Okay. All right. All right. Moving on to the four hour time frame. Again, four hour on ES is mainly, it's much tighter on ES than it is on NQ. If you remember the NQ, there was like, you know, daily change of character here or four hour change of character, four hour change of character. Now, you still have that, but underneath us, directly underneath us, neath, underneath us, we have all of this consolidation that happened right here, which created this four hour demand. So the big level for me, right, for me to start really be believing the bearish case for ES, in my opinion, we got to get these these buyers underwater here, right? That's where the change of character starts at 4874 for me, right? And that's what I basically put on the daily um time frame, right? So if you're looking at change of character for me, that begins at that 4874 and beneath. And then we'll start trading into 4859. We got this uh low right here that we could retest. Price could find buyers there. Then we got this four hour, right? This four hour uh fair value gap right here, right? From this point to this point. From 4841.25 into 4859.75. And then last but not least, we have our beautiful four hour demand zone sitting at 4830.50. Those are the bearish cases and potential bounces on the bull side. I mean, that's technically the bull case, but you can trade it either way. Like it doesn't matter to me. All right. Last but not least, in this particular scenario, we have this four hour demand or supply zone that we called out last week that worked so beautifully on price action, right? So what we have is this four hour supply zone. Sorry, that's my kid in the background. So we had this four hour supply zone that we talked about. You can see again, go back to the videos. You can see price reacted to these levels directly, right? Which tells me that this was a pretty strong level, right? But also buyers are stepping in pretty early too to push this back up, unlike in Q, right? That's why I said to me, ES is much more bullish 
than NQ is. Now, if we do push above here, right? Let's see, we get above 49.57, then we can look for price to start trading into 49.90. And then finally, 502825 is that all time high with B adjustment on the news. The fundamental catalyst coming up next week, all next week is going to be the end all be all in regards to is this bullishness going to continue or do we get a nice pullback? So uh, definitely be paying attention to the fundamentals. I don't trade fundamentals, but I definitely like to understand what's going on with them. Now, last but not least, let me take you through the volatility index. All right. So I, I only go over the four hour time frame with the volatility index because, I mean, it's basically just been falling the entire time. I talked about the volatility volatility index last week, and I believe we were at if I'm not mistaken, I think we were here. Right. Yeah, I think we, we were here. Yeah, that's Monday 22nd. Yeah, we were here. All right. And I said, if we break below 14, the market is going to continue pushing up to the highs right up to all time highs. Well, we broke below 14. We pushed all the way down, created demand down here. And guess what? I just showed you what the market did because the volatility index follows the market like a glove. It's basically showing you that there's buyers and sellers uh, putting in or building positions. So if you look at this, we pushed up and I guarantee if you go back and look at Wednesday, the market fell on Wednesday. If you go back and look at uh, Wednesday through about Thursday, we basically consolidated in between a range and that's exactly what the VIX did. And then we got this aggressive push on Thursday to push the market down. The market bounced back up, basically was range bound, which is exactly what we were trading in the shop. We were just trading this range because the VIX was in a range, right? And then at the end of the day, the VIX pushed up, the market sold off to end the day. That's basically the exact way we read the VIX. So what are we looking for? As long as the VIX can hold, and again, I just saw this level, right? As long as the VIX can hold right here, right? You just paint this green. This is basically a demand zone, right? We're holding these lows. If VIX can hold above basically 14 again and continue to break through this liquidity right here, right? We expect the VIX to start trading above 15. And remember, we have so much volatility, so much, so many catalysts that are coming into this market this week. You bet your bottom dollar this VIX is going to start trading much higher, right? Maybe starting tonight, right? It's going to start trading much higher than what it was before. Because again, fear, uncertainty, and doubt travels much faster than certainty and greed, right? It's just the way the market moves. But I hope that has been really good for you guys. I hope that has helped you out a lot. But that's all that I have in regards to the top-down market analysis. If you would, please make sure you hit the uh, like and subscribe button on the video. Leave some comments down below. Uh, let me know if these uh, analysis are, are helping you guys out and we'll continue to push them out. That being said, myself and Jay Seals will be live Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time to about 11, a little longer on days such as FOMC days. And we'll be there educating and sharing our journey of trading. I hope you guys enjoyed this stream. Please make sure you hit the buttons and uh, we out, man. Peace.